An inquest has recorded a verdict of accidental death on two men who were killed in a plane crash a year ago. Ian Davis and Stephen Shutt were in a light aircraft when it hit a crop sprayer at Seething Airfield near Bungie. Ian Davies and Stephen Shutt died doing what they loved. They took off in Stephen's Kristen Eagle from Seething Airfield. It was for a feature Ian was writing. He was in the rear seat, flying the plane. His friend and colleague Keith Wilson was on the ground taking photos. This one just before the crash. As the plane came into land, it hit a tractor spraying crops. Ian was pronounced dead at the scene. Stephen died in hospital three weeks later. And today, the man who documented their last moments paid tribute to them. Steve was worked full-time in flying, but loved um, aerobatics and loved flying the Christian Eagle. Um, Ian was an enthusiast in aviation, completely and utterly enthusiastic about everything he did, and tragically will be a big loss to aviation. The runway at Seething surrounded by farmers' fields. It's not clear whether the men saw the tractor beneath them, and if they did, then they didn't have time to move. Today we heard from the farmer who was spraying the fields, from eyewitnesses who were at the airfield, and from the Air Accidents Investigation Board. And after the jury reached its verdict of accidental death, the coroner, William Armstrong, praised the two men, saying they died living life to the full. Both men had two children and their families were at today's inquest. Now they can focus on grieving, almost a year on from the tragic accident. And Jana Gadgill for BBC Look East in Norwich. Two further arrests have been made in connection with the murder of an Ipswich woman. The body of Rosalind Hunt was found at her flat in Victoria Street in August. A man and a 15-year-old girl have already been charged with murder. A third suspect is still being questioned. Now another man and woman are being held on suspicion of murder. A man's appeared at Ipswich Crown Court in connection with a fire at Stowmarket's Regal Theatre. The building was damaged last month. 22-year-old Lewis Philby has been charged with arson and endangering life. He's due back in court in November. Now, at the moment, on average, we recycle just over a third of the rubbish we throw away at home. How much further could we go? Today the government announced a number of trials to find out, and one of them will be in Suffolk. In the village of Hunston today, it was recycling day. It wasn't long before the men arrived to empty the green-topped bins. In Suffolk, 50% of domestic rubbish is currently recycled, well above the national average. Now the government wants Suffolk's seven district councils to each choose a road. Homes and businesses in it will be given advice on how to recycle even more. I think there's extra which we can do, like we've got the batteries, household batteries we can recycle, we can do the Tetra Packs we can recycle, we can even look at nappies. You know, there's a great potential, instead of burying uh, disposable nappies, use them for energy, for uh, heat and, um, and power. These days we all have recycling bins. This one has paper and plastic inside it. But under plans announced today by the Environment Secretary Hilary Benn, councils in future could issue anything up to five different bins. In practice, that's unlikely to happen. In this road in Ipswich, houses don't have room to store bins. So is there an appetite for more recycling? I recycle uh, nearly everything we've got. I've got three extra bins of my own in the back garden polystyrene I think we should do something about and the other food packaging particularly that is not recyclable at the moment, the cling film type thing. In 10 years time the government wants 75% of household rubbish either recycled or used to generate energy. Now it's down to the Suffolk project to see if it can deliver. Richard Daniel, BBC Look East, Hunston. In football, Luke Daly has signed a new contract with Norwich City. The deal will run until at least 2012. He's 19 years old and has made eight appearances for the first team this season. Manager Paul Lambert says he's made a great start to his career and thinks he has lots of potential. Iron Suffolk has a pub again two months after the last one closed down. New landlords have now taken over the Queen's Head. The previous tenants closed the doors earlier this year because they couldn't make it pay. There used to be more than 20 pubs in the town. People in Colchester could soon be dining at the top of the town's water tower. Plans have finally been submitted to transform it into a penthouse and restaurant. Since being decommissioned in the 1980s, it's changed owners several times. 
It's one of Colchester's iconic landmarks, remaining unchanged for over 120 years. It's home to several pigeons and in need of a makeover. Yeah. And that's exactly what owner George Braithwaite is hoping to do. His vision is to transform Jumbo into a penthouse, restaurant and flats. At the moment it's uh, just derelict and it's got no use or purpose. So it's not a quick, short, sharp profit. It's um, a long-term long investment and hopefully um, it'll be here after I'm dead and gone and everybody in Colchester can enjoy it. Here we are. The investment will be around £4 million. Architects' plans include fitting glass between Jumbo's legs and creating offices on the first two floors. The elevation. One of the key design issues was to try and keep the silhouette of Jumbo, particularly the light coming through the legs. So uh, we designed it so that anybody coming out of the town hall, if they looked right, would see Jumbo, the light coming through, and so we put the restaurant up there and we put the two mezzanine floors on each side to keep that silhouette. And with Jumbo looking on, these shoppers seem pleased with the plans. Crack on, I'm not too fussed really. I'm all for having something done to it, as long as the, the basic structure is kept there because it is a good landmark for the town. It's always been talked about for a long, long time. It's about time somebody did something with it, really. If plans are approved, people could soon be dining with a view like this. Felicity Simper, BBC Look East, Colchester. As we've been hearing this week on Look East, a new mayor for Bedford will be chosen on Thursday. It follows the death of Frank Branston in August. It's the only place in this region where the mayor is directly elected by the people. Joel Mapp has been looking at the key issues for voters. There are parts of Bedford that appear forlorn, and there's a sense it needs new leadership. The late Frank Branston tried hard. Two years ago, the former mayor showed us his attempt to reinvigorate the town. Back then, it was a building site. And this is that development today. It's finished, but it's not been the catalyst for regeneration that Frank Branston had hoped for. So redeveloping other parts of the town will be a priority. The money for it will be actually generated by the housing that's actually been built on all the schemes, and therefore we need to get the economy back working, and that's not something that Bedford Borough can do. We can lobby, we can help, we can actually help with infrastructure with developers, but we need to actually lobby and work with the developers to see if we can be at the forefront of the regeneration when the recession ends. You, uh, no, you are a uh, teenager passing by. The new mayor will also decide the fate of Bedford's lower, middle and upper schools. Some candidates want a two-tier system of primaries and secondaries instead. Others want to retain the status quo. I would stay with three-tier because I don't think the money is going to be made available for us to do the transition. And because the money is not available, I can't risk a, a disruptive uh, education of children and I can't fund it with taxpayer money. The new mayor's other priority will be congestion. Phase one of a bypass is nearly finished, but phase two has been halted by the recession. I believe we can push it forward with money from the borough, some money from the developer and uh, money from central government, but it needs an experienced Labour politician in order to bring it about. It may have short-term benefits, but long-term the roads do fill back up again. We would wanting, we'd be wanting to look at um, being thinking differently about how we move around the borough, so improving our public transport. Whoever becomes mayor will have a lot to do, but they will have the power to do it, to become a true local hero. Joel Mapp, BBC Lachiste, Bedford.